Yeah, thanks very much, Bill. Uh, there's a lot of anticipation here this morning. We're actually here to look at two superstars, one being the mighty Buff, who, who would have thought uh, a little foal, an awkwardly built little foal, born on the 5th of November 2007, went through the sale for 22000 is now the winner of $6.5 million, would be making his way to Maydan. So that's our first super, superstar we're going to take a look at this morning. And, of course, Eagle Farm, the, you know, our signature racetrack here in Brisbane. It's the Flemington of Brisbane. It's the Randwick of Brisbane. And it's, of course, uh, on display here this morning. We don't have the use of the full circuit, but these horses are now trotting around. They're going to turn around at about the 900. They're over at about the 400 now. They're going to turn around and uh, they're going to whip home three furlongs here. Now, buffering gallops with stable mat mates. Uh, Dream of Slips, who I'm told is a very smart track worker. Going to have a ch quick chat to trainer Rob Heathcote now about this morning. And wow, Rob, this is very exciting. It is, and it's, a, it's an exciting time for all of us, not just buffering connections, but uh, the Brisbane Racing Club and, you know, the punters and fans of racing in Queensland. It's been a long road, but uh, light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. There is Indeed, uh, you've watched this track get ripped up from not last September, the September before, so it's been a relatively long process, but it's been done very well. It has, and, and I've got no doubt that this is going to uh, turn out to be one of Australia's best racing tracks. It's a lovely long straight, and it's going to give punters that much-needed confidence to, to open their wallet and get stuck in. When you spec this horse at the sales, you never could have imagined this sort of fortune with him. Wow, 22000 and what is it now? $6,477.27. <laughs> You've got that down, Pat. Oh, yeah, and look, it's, uh, it's a massive adventure we're about to undertake, you know, off to Dubai and then on to Hong Kong, but uh, the opportunity's there. Let's take it. I'm thinking he's, he's really enjoying this uh, racing later in life. It's quite sparingly that he goes around and he's just on song each time he steps out. Well, I take heart, Bernie, from the Maidan Group 3 sprint on the Saturday night just past. The winner was eight years old, the third horse was nine years old and the fifth horse was ten years old. So, you know, old buff, as we call him, at the age of eight, you know, he's, he's in as good as good a fettle as he's been in the last few years. So, uh, fingers crossed. And he's a great traveller? Yeah, and that's probably the biggest issue we've got to overcome, you know, from Sydney to Hong Kong and on to Dubai. It's quite a lengthy journey. He's got a couple of weeks to get over it, and that's the key to his success, I think. All right, Rob, let's catch up again after the work and see what you think of it. I'm pretty sure you're going to be impressed, but I'm going to swap over to Brownie now. Thanks for your time. I don't know who's more nervous, myself or the track rangers. <laughs>Rob Heathcote now, and Rob, that looked very smooth. Yeah, he did, and, uh, you know, without talking to Damien yet, he was stretching out lovely, and, you know, he put a few lengths on the other fella, but I think that's to be expected, and I did ask Damien to make sure he has a good one because uh, the next time he has a good hard hit, that'll be in Dubai itself. All right, and obviously this track looked amazing then. Yeah, it did. It looked like there was a little bit more kickback than what we would have hoped for, but uh, as I said, we've still got a ways to go, and this is not the perfect time of year for Kaikuyu grass with the humidity and the heat, but, uh, you know, we're still a couple of months away until we actually race on it, so uh, no doubt we'll get on top of it. A couple of showers this morning too. Oh, more than a couple of showers. Our jump outs were cancelled, so uh, we had a really good downpour, but I think they would have run some time there. Now, are all the owners heading over there? Pretty much. I mean, not all, because there's a huge gathering, and uh, I think there's going to be, you know, 20 plus of us, so it's going to be a, a good enough group to enjoy the festivities. How did you come to keep your share? Obviously, it's, well, it's not your share, actually. It's Vicky's share, isn't it? Your, your wife. Well, everything that's mine's hers, and what's hers is hers. <laughs> so I think that's, how, that's pretty much how it works at our household. But, uh, yeah, look, it's a, it's a lovely story. I mean, I look back and wake up and I have nightmares. I bought him owned 100%, kept 50% and gave away that 50% at the last minute. So it's only cost me $3 million so far. But, look, it's, it's a great group of people. I mean, it's been a hell of a journey. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed it keeps going.
And you're of the opinion he's going as good now as ever? I think so. As you said earlier, we only race him sparingly. Uh, he only has his two and three run preparations and then we give him a good break. And, you know, if all goes well in Dubai and Hong Kong, then he'll come home, have a break, and we'll go back down to Melbourne and defend. Uh, he's won three more stakes and we'll go back down. If he's well, happy, racing well, defend that. We'll go on to the Manicata and, gee, a trip to Perth and the Magic Million sounds good again. <laughs> does indeed. His confirmation really, I thought, put a spanner in the works. When I used to look at him as a, as a two-year-old, early two-year-old, he looks like he's walking on his head, basically, didn't he? Yeah, he does. He's got an unusual confirmation in that he's a little bit like a dragster. You know, he's got a high bum and uh, only short front legs, but, you know, he's got the heart of a lion. And I, and I think, you know, I've been very fortunate as his trainer that, you know, 50 races and some 30 Group 1 races pretty much in a row is quite extraordinary. And uh, here he is, you know, still sound and healthy and happy and racing uh, with renewed enthusiasm at the ripe old age of eight. All right, he's back. I'll let you catch up with Brownie. Thank you. Yeah, there's trainer Rob Heathcote. He's going to have a quick word with Damien Brown and hopefully we'll get Damien over here for a chat and he can run us through how buffering felt, how the track felt and uh, how much he still had in hand. He was asked to give him a pretty firm sort of a hit out and obviously as, as Rob alluded to this track is plenty of giving it here this morning but it was almost silent as they went past us. You could barely hear them. Sean you're the track in. Unfortunately we couldn't chat as you went around but how did it feel? Yeah it felt terrific Bernie. Um, yeah like you say I lost you when I got up there but um, he gave me a great feel. Um, the track feel was amazing you know for the amount of rain we had this morning. Um, he, he really got through it well. Um, they're hardly even marking it really for, for the amount of rain we've had and he was able to really stretch out on it and appreciated it. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting back here and riding on it. And it was almost silent as you went by, like the, you couldn't hear much noise. Usually in a track with a bit of water on it you hear a lot of noise. Yeah, exactly and it gave me that feel when we were riding as well. Uh, it was just like running on a, on a mattress more or less, you know, it was a great soil of grass and a, and a bit of cushion there. but. They were able to skip through it and really stride out. So, um, you know, we're looking, we're in for some good times ahead. I'm dying to know how the camber felt. Um, obviously, we've done away with that thousand metre shoot now, and they've got that lovely camber there at the half mile. Did that feel like you could really corner much better? It did, um, especially with him. He, he just started to quicken at that stage, and, and he really skipped off the camber, and you could feel him change stride and really want to get going. So, um, you know, it's going to help horses. Uh, get off at that corner and really hit the line strongly. Um, so there's some, going to be some good racing here. Did you feel like he did enough work? He did. That's probably uh, all he really needs. Obviously the thousand metres and he's got a long trip ahead of him. So, um, you know, that's probably where he wants to be at this stage and we couldn't be happier with him. Well done. Enjoy the morning. Thanks, Benny. There he is. Wimpy joins me now. David, hey, you, how are you? Excellent. You only got a little, a little inside of Eagle Farm when you first started here, I think about six months of it? That's right, yeah. Look, started uh, early 2014 and uh, closed in August that year. So uh, we're, to say we're excited today is an understatement, Bernie. Yeah, coming back. And looking forward to May, obviously uh, a lot of anticipation, a lot of nerves too, no doubt. Absolutely. We've done a lot of work, not only in the track, as you just heard from Rob, but we've also done a lot of work on our facilities, some $5.5 million worth for our membership facility. So we're really excited to be back here, both for racing. Um, Queensland needs Eagle Farm to come back online and uh, we've done our facilities up as I said so we're very excited. A great track brings great horses and of course many patrons. Absolutely look um, the punters will come back for to see Eagle Farm we'll be in a honeymoon period there it's been nearly two years since Eagle Farm has raced uh, so uh, that'll bring a lot of people back but also as you saw this morning with the buff you know to have this great Queensland horse do this trial this morning was very exciting. All right, Dave, you're known as a bit of the party man here in Brisbane. What sort of parties have we got for the carnival this year? I know we've got almost $10 million up for grabs. We have. Look, that's right. Um, this year's theme is the seven deadly sins, Bernie. So um, uh, there's a few sins there that I'm sure a few of us will cross over the uh, five weeks of carnival. Uh, but look, we, um, we, 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 are, we do things in, in Queensland with an entertainment flavour and we're looking forward to seeing nearly 50,000 people come back and enjoying those seven sins. All right, it's party time in Brisbane this winter. Thanks for your time, Dave. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Bernie.